Welcome everyone back to another Dragalia Lost video. My name is Z-Free and for this video we're going to cover increasing your might and everything that you need to know about improving your characters, your teams in general, and things of that ilk. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video. Also subscribe to my Dragalia Lost channel down below in the description. That's where most of this content will go otherwise. But we're going to go ahead and talk about literally everything on the screen. So. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So as you see here, uh, my might for my team right now is currently 8358. So there are a lot of different factors that play into getting more might on your team. So we're going to go ahead and bounce back over to the upgrade tab. And everything, like I said, that you see here plays a factor, either big or small or things like that. So the very beginning of all this starts with the adventurers. Why? Because they are the most important. They equip the dragons. They equip the equipment. They equip the worm prints. They are the most important. So... First tip I have for you is if you can re-roll or start off with a five star, do so. Otherwise, four stars are solid and can be upgraded with Eldwater, such as uh, my character here. He's a natural four star. I upgraded Luther. Now, that being said, nonetheless, use units that you like. But I would recommend. I'm not going to go into team building too much. I would recommend. Uh, oof. I would recommend looking at characters that have solid skills and or solid co abilities as well for your overall team. Um, so that being said. We're going to go ahead and take my Hawk here. So to begin, of course, you do have access to all of the upgrade materials. Clicking auto will allow it to go all the way through. But you may be wondering, hey, how do you get these upgrade materials? Well, fancy you asked that because if you click it and you click how to acquire, it will show you the uh, stages you can go to that will allow you to acquire specific items. So if you go over to the events tab, you have access to the avenue of power event or avenue to power event. Now, for some of you guys, you may only have the beginner, may, may only have standard, you know, some of them are locked off. Because like I said, it says the required team might for the hardest difficulty is 6,000. So what I had to do for a while was, of course, you can get these items as well by playing story. I'll also show you guys another way to do it. But one thing that I had to do that I will recommend you guys do right now and improve your characters is... Play with the hardest difficulty, right? Play with the highest difficulty, whether you're doing it solo or if you're doing co-op and creating or finding a room and playing that way. Spam it, spam it, spam it, spam it, spam it. Uh, periodically go back, upgrade your characters, spam, 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 and then that's how you're able to increase your might overall with some of the other tips we're going to talk about here. But that's something that you're going to want to make sure that you're doing is you are playing this event because it's pretty much the best way to get this stuff. Now, another opportunity that you have for getting that stuff, aside from buying the... Uh, packs that they have. They have a lot of little upgrade packs you can buy. Yes, I've spent money on the game because I enjoy it, uh, but you can do things like that. You can buy those packs if you're interested, but if you are not, you have a one time per day item summon at the top that is free, right? If you do it once, it gets it's free. Second from there is 50, so on and so forth. I haven't seen what comes after this because I haven't done it, but they do have other equipments and things like that that you would need. Also, on this exact same tab daily, you get to buy a few of the gold crystals as well for 10,000 of the rubies. So you would be able to buy the materials that you would need to upgrade your characters as well. And for future reference, same applies to dragon stuff or other things right here that would help you out in your quest to improving your team overall, right? So let's go back over to the upgrade tab. So now that I've covered the basics for adventurers, again, you need to train their level. Training their level is the most basic way to improve their might. Now, another element to them is they have mana circles. Now, mana circles are really, really good for a couple of reasons. They add additional stats to your characters while also giving them extra abilities. Again, let's go back to uh, Luther here. I love this guy's art, man. He's pretty dope. So he has a couple of skills right here, and that's pretty much it for this character. Abilities as well. You unlock these by learning them in the mana circle. So again, these are ways that you would improve your character, right? Off the bat, they don't have access to all these. You have to improve them in the mana circle. So let's go ahead and check out where his mana circle is right now. And again, same thing about how to acquire this stuff that'll train. So currently I'm on, what, the third one? Yeah, I'm the third circle, and there's five overall, it seems. Uh, so right now I need to unbind to get to the next one. Can we go back to where we were? Thank you. Um, so right here, he would get Legato Step level two. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. You can, again, just unlock their abilities, upgrade the abilities that they have, because I just got a level 2 ability on him, uh, or skill, I guess. And then once you're done fully doing the full circle, you're able to unbind. It takes you to the next circle, so on and so forth, which would have skills or things like that. You see stat boosts are here, plus 12 strength, plus 15 HP. All of that little stuff helps with upgrading your characters. And same thing applies if you need to know where to get stuff. You can click it. It'll tell you how to acquire it. Just like previously, it'll take you where you need to go, right? And same thing applies, though. You need to upgrade your might if you're going to be able to try to take on some of those stages. You might not be able to take them on unless you upgrade your might. So 
that is it. Otherwise, all those things together, as far as the actual adventurer go, play into your character. Now, one other thing we're going to cover really quick before I forget is we are going over to the castle ground. So make sure, hear me, make sure that you are doing this because it's really easy to forget. It is incredibly easy to forget to do this. So make sure you build up your castle, right? And upgrade your facilities, all the different little facilities here. Train them, level them up because it's beneficial to your team. So for example, we're going to take this flame avatar, excuse me, alt altar. Uh, so right now it's offering all of my units that have a fire attribute plus 2% HP plus 2 strength. As you train it, it gets better and better and better. So I currently use a lot of, uh, a lot of water. Here's how the water boost is looking right now. I do have to wait for it, but this is very important. And then, of course, this is important, too, because as you upgrade this stuff, you're then able to upgrade the castle. And then by upgrading the castle here, which it's not letting me click, the Hel Haldium, I don't know, uh, you are then able to upgrade the smithy which allows you to uh, go ahead and craft better weapons, which we are actually going to cover right now. So again, make sure you're doing this stuff because it's important, okay? Uh, it's very easy to forget. Also, while you're there, collect all your stuff because that's a way to get dragon fruits and stuff like that, what we'll talk about when we get to dragons. Let's go ahead and cover weapons. Now, right now, there's not a lot of opportunity to get weapons. These are all pretty much just drops. Uh, you have the opportunity otherwise, though, to train them up and then combine them into other weapons which would then increase their max level cap which would then from there obviously allow for them to get better stats and more might so very very simple right not a lot to cover here but we're going to go over to the crafting section and talk about weapon crafting now otherwise right here you see under the weapons it says requires smithy level four right here requires level seven so these are going to be harder to get it's going to take some time to get that because you have to upgrade your castle and your castle requires your facility level to be pretty high uh and that's pretty that pretty much means you have to be upgrading everything so pretty much how the castle works is well since we're not there anymore i'll just briefly say this you have to upgrade all the other things the altars all that other stuff the mines you have to upgrade that stuff you have to you have no choice if you want to upgrade the Haldium castle thingy right and then from there you can upgrade the smithy so you have to do that so make sure you are um, and you can also buy more of those little dragon helper things if you want to do that to uh, speed along the process by doing more than two things at a time. But for now, we're going to do this example with the knight sword at the very top because it's one that I can actually do. You can see it's base stats, 7 HP and 25. As you see, you scroll down to the hero sword, 108 versus 25 power. Yeah, it makes sense as to why it's a lot harder to get that. So then from there, you could craft a weapon. I'll just do this here. We'll craft it. Uh, and by the way, if you don't have all these options, you unlock them by playing story mode. Some of this stuff I don't have access to, but most of it I do. You unlock it by playing story mode. So once you do that, right, I already have one here. You have the opportunity to enhance the weapon. So what happens is from there, you can create elemental weapons, which would be better on your characters. Now, one thing that I just now remembered that I didn't really cover a whole lot was affinities, right? On your characters, we'll cover that in a moment. Just be aware that there are elemental weapons as well, and so on and so forth. So... Make sure that you do that. You have to upgrade the weapons. You have to unbind them as well, which again is just combining it with other weapons. So for example, I'm gonna show you guys an example of what I would need to do with that specific weapon. I would need to unbind it with more copies of it in order to unlock the next level of it. So we're gonna go ahead and actually do this. That increases the max level. And of course, by increasing the max level, it opens up more opportunity for strength increases. So. We're going to go over here briefly, like I said, and cover affinities. Uh, right under the stars for the characters, you see their type. So the far left uh, is fire, next one is water, next one's wind, and the next one is fire. So right under the co-abilities and the might on a stage, it'll show you the color tree. So you'd be fine. Just make sure you're taking elemental units that are uh, beneficial. So here's a really good scenario of what I want to point out. Make sure that you're matching up affinities. Um, if you have a water dragon, give it to your water character. You know, because what happens is... When they are together, they increase ability. So this unit has an ability here uh, for water units to get HP and strength plus 15%. And that only applies if it's equipped to a water type character. So you got to do that. There are also, uh, again, elemental weapons, abilities and stuff that only apply when it's a water type user pretty much. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. So going on, um, we're going to move on from that. That applies to every character. Make sure you're doing that. Uh, we're going to go back over to the upgrade tab. I covered crafting. Again, it's important to do that. Um, I'm going to show you guys a brief example, actually, really quick. We're going to craft two of these, and we'll just merge them. And um, I'll show you guys the upgrading of the weapon as well. And again, there are a bunch of different types of weapons up here you would need to craft. Each character has specific weapons that they can equip. So we're going to go over here, and um, we need to unbind the knight's sword with a couple of weapons. 
that increases the max level by up to 40. So now that it has that, we're going to train it up. And we'll just click auto because it obviously can do it on its own. Doesn't take very much equipment to do that. So the stats boosted to 24 and 86, which is dope. And we're going to come over to crafting and enhance. We'll click that weapon. And now it has the option to go one of two routes. So I'm going to let it go this way. And it'll craft into this weapon, which, again, you have to unbind it with more copies of this same weapon, which means you would have to go through that exact same thing I just did, get four of the previous one, unbind them. Then you would create another one of these and merge them all together, and then you would get access to the elemental variant. Because right now, it will not let me go elemental because it's going to say this needs to be fully um, unbound. So let's go back over to the upgrades tab. Again, that plays into getting more on your characters. Worm prints are a little bit interesting because they have, um, they don't really seem to have affinities per se, like typings and stuff. Uh, big whale. <laughs> but they do have access to being upgraded, of course. And they do have stats, they have might and all that, and they also have abilities. So make sure that you're giving appropriate abilities to characters that would otherwise need them. So skill damage plus 25% increases attack skill damage. Very, very helpful on attack type units. Um, which is something I just realized I didn't cover. There's a lot to this game. I'm trying to get through it pretty quickly, but um, right here. This is a support unit. You see it above the level. Each unit has a label, right? Support unit, attack unit. Uh, you can give anybody any type of worm print, though, so it doesn't really matter. Otherwise, last little bit is dragons. Uh, dragons are very, very vanilla. I talked about how you need to make sure that they have the right affinity uh, attached to a character. So if I go over to um, this unit, can you let me long press it, please? Thank you. And you can see his flame strength plus 40% boost to a flame type user. A fire type unit gets 40% increase to strength. Incredibly powerful. Uh, he also deals fire damage there. So you're good to go with that. So all in all, you're able to get these equipments to train up your dragons. Now, this one actually doesn't seem to take you where you would need to go to get the equipment. But I can tell you right now, your castle should have a little altar for getting the dragon fruits. Albeit, they're not going to be the best ones, but it's still nice to get. Which you should be training up, again, the castle when you have the opportunity. Mine is currently uh, undergoing maintenance right here. So it's not going to let me do too much. But a place you can get dragon fruits, aside from that little shop I showed you guys earlier, is if you take on the dragon trials. And you should be able to get some from regular story stages. I don't have a specific one, I can tell you. But by taking on dragon trials, specifically on harder difficulties, you can see, like, I, I haven't even unlocked the hardest one. But you can uh, get those types of equipments to, or uh, items to train up your dragons. So that would help you out otherwise. So all in all, all those things together, making sure you have the right affinity, making sure you're training your characters, making sure that when you get the opportunity, you do weapons. As you see, I haven't done too many weapons yet. I haven't really worked on that too much. Uh, making sure you're training your dragons, things of that nature, making sure you're training your castle. All of that together is what allows you to have a solid team. And um, as far as team building, I'll try to cover that in a later video when I understand it a little bit better. I understand pretty much the basics. But that is it. Again, if you enjoy this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the Dragalia Lost channel down below in the description because if you are expecting this channel to pump it out a lot, that's not going to be the thing. You're going to see a lot of other stuff you probably don't care about if you only care about this game for future reference. So have an awesome day. Thank you for tuning in. And I will catch all of you in the next one.